Hey everybody, I'm back from my two month long break. I spent these past 60 something days reflecting on my own existence and what purpose I might serve in the grand spectacle of a show we call life. I come back to this YouTube channel with a profound understanding of life. I feel like I've become closer not only to myself, but the dirt, the birds, the sky. I feel at peace and nothing can tear this feeling away from me. What the hell happened? Why was this made? Why does this have nothing to do with the original Space Jam? That movie was amazing! Sure, it was corny at times, but who doesn't love a little corn? You just had to ruin it, didn't you? But I think most of us can agree that Space Jam was a childhood classic. So why is this movie so bad? Space Jam 2 is one of the worst movies I've seen in a good while. How do you follow up one of the greatest basketball movies of all time with such an awful piece of Hollywood pandering bullcrap? You go from probably the movie equivalent of Jesus himself to the most underwhelming second coming of Christ ever. I think the main problem with the movie is that it didn't need to exist at all, and there are literally no satisfying ways to continue the story of the original. However, Space Jam 2 kills two birds with one stone by not continuing the story of the original and not being satisfying in the slightest. The only similarity between the two movies is that they both feature a successful and well-respected basketball player colliding with the Looney Tunes characters to play a basketball game. That's it. There's no mention of any of the previous movie's events other than a couple of throwaway lines and a really drawn out Michael B. Jordan joke. I mean, the reveal to the joke was funny, but the whole thing lasted for like 30 seconds. It's Michael B. Jordan, the actor. Now, just because Space Jam 2 isn't connected to the original doesn't automatically make it bad. Instead, it's automatically made bad by its horrible concept and painfully unfunny jokes. I would like to ask everyone in the audience, what purpose do the Looney Tunes serve in this story? If you answered not a bit, then you would be only half correct. Space Jam 2 is about LeBron James reconnecting with his youngest son, who he's grown distant from due to both of them wanting different things. LeBron wants his son to be good at basketball, but his son wants to work on his video game. Okay, that's a fine conflict, but that doesn't explain the Canadian dollar in the room. Well, apparently LeBron and his son get trapped in the serververse, an alternate sort of dimension where all the worlds of the properties owned by Warner Brothers reside. So this Warner Bros. universe is controlled by an algorithm that goes by the name of Al G. Rhythm. Please laugh. <laughs> but that's not even the best part. He's played by Don Cheadle. That automatically makes this movie a 10 out of 10. Thank you everyone for watching and apologize for being an idiot. If only. So apparently LeBron has to win a basketball game in order to save his son, and he has to assemble a team of beloved and fierce Warner Brothers characters to get stuck with the Looney Tunes. Why the tunes? What benefits are there to having the Looney Tunes as LeBron's teammates? Actually, what benefits are there to having any fictional character play with LeBron? I get why being in a more techie and controlled environment like the serververse makes sense. It's the only possible way for LeBron and his son to play in his son's basketball video game. But why can't he just play by himself? And it's just a movie about LeBron's realization that he's been a not-so-great dad. But I guess without the Looney Tunes and Warner Brothers stuff, you can't make funny jokes like Granny being from The Matrix. Or Rick and Morty doing experiments on the Tasmanian Devil. Or LeBron James being short like Kevin Hart. Dear God, I think it might be a Kalam Pokephobe. The movie relies on only pop culture references for its comedy. Now, pop culture references aren't all that bad on their own. If they're executed well, they can be pretty funny to those who get the joke, or they can just appear as a normal line or action that fits in with the story. Space Jam 2 is dumb and stupid and dumb and uses pop culture references just to keep the attention of people. There's a scene where these Hollywood executives are talking to LeBron about him acting in all their movies, and they show a video of LeBron as the main character of a bunch of movies and TV shows. Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, all just a bunch of franchises that are there to make the audience go, Ooh, ooh, I know that one! I'm so smart! Take my money, Space Jam 2! And then there's the worst joke in the entire movie. I'm short... Like Kevin Hart. Do you get it? <laughs> See, it's funny because everyone knows who Kevin Hart is. Kevin Hart is relatable. Also, he's short, which is funny. Are you chuckling yet? Chortling? Guffawing even? Have you bust a gut yet? Hmm? 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 I... 
I, I, I don't know what this video was trying to accomplish. I mean, I know why I made this video. I needed to make one so that I could get a video out in order to prevent my channel from losing traction. I made this video solely for commercial reasons. The same reason that they made Space Jam 2. Huh. Some would say poetic. In conclusion, Space Jam 2 is a worthless movie that is the definition of a soulless cash grab. Space Jam 1 is the definition of a cash grab with personality. While sure the movie was made just to sell toys and shoot the Looney Tunes back into the mainstream, it ended up being charming and memorable, something that you can't just say about Space Jam 2. And I know that in 20 years, we'll still look back fondly on the first movie. While whenever someone mentions there was a sequel, all anyone will say is, Oh yeah, there was a sequel. 4 out of 10, do better Hollywood.